Hello everybody, Brian Smith here of American Steam Railroad giving you your September 2020 update here on Reading 2100. We're happy to say that the forging and machining of the 560 stables has now been completed. Our volunteers have spent many hours and days dedicated to this project, which first involved cutting bar stock to length, forging the head, then profiling it to a round shape. We then drilled telltale holes in several steps so as not to break the aircraft gray drill bits. What's still left to do is to sandblast the stables to remove oil, grime, and mill scale so the welders have very good material to work with when they go into the firebox. Speaking of welding, we'd like to take a moment here to thank those of you who have sponsored to have the stables welded in. We're almost halfway to reaching our goal of welding these into the firebox. You can help us reach our goal by sponsoring one today for just $9. Other projects done in the past month include removing various items out of long-term storage, including tender doors, great shaker bars and mounts, along with other items. Volunteers squeezed under the engine as well to reapply grease to the main axle areas. They also applied a light oil to grease cellar parts to prevent rusting. The feed water pipe from the tender that suffered cracks from freeze damage has now been repaired by brazing. It was found in the tender that one of the shutoff water valves to the engine had a bent rod. This was taken out and parts around the area were cleaned, so a new filter screen and rod can be put back into place. Volunteers also explored the inside of the tender where 19,000 gallons of water usually would be. We found that the baffles in floor to be in good shape and that this area will need to be cleaned during a future work session. And now, our own Stephen Harvey explains some of the unique tools we use to restore Reading 2100. Hey everybody, welcome to a American Steam Railroad uh, Steam Tech Moment here. Uh, what we have in front of us today is known as a deadweight gauge tester. Uh, this is used to test the steam gauges and to make sure that they actually reach uh, the pounds and the pointer shows what's actually on the gauge per the weight. So what we're gonna to do today is, is we're gonna go through the process of showing you how this tester actually functions. And what it is, is it's actually fairly simple. Uh, this cylinder acts like compression that you'd put like a mineral oil in, that's what's recommended. You actually fill this reservoir right here, which we're gonna to demonstrate today, uh, with a little bit of oil. And this oil is then used to actually compress to test the gauge. Just like a uh, drip cup in a steam locomotive, where this actually, you would turn on the actual oil by using the screw in here. What we're gonna do is, is we're gonna back this all the way out, which actually makes the oil get sucked into the, into the system. You then at that point actually show, turn it off and turn it closed. And at this point, when you start putting the screw in, this weight will actually start to bounce at this point as I start pushing it in. We do have like about 150 pounds of weight on here. And the reason why it's called a dead weight gauge tester because you're actually putting dead weight to simulate what steam would be on the system. And as you can see, this actually did show up and is actually floating. It's recommended in the instructions that we use. They always say spin it a little bit just to make sure you get all air bubbles and pockets out of it. But as you can see, the gauge that we're testing today is nowhere near showing 150 pounds on the gauge. And the reason why this is the reason why we use the deadweight gauge tester, because then you don't make assumptions when you use these gauges that, there's, that they're showing the right PSI. And this also means also too, that guarantees that every year when you do the annual inspection, that you do get these gauges tested and a sticker would actually get put on here saying it when it was tested and, and logged. But as you can see, unfortunately, this gauge is gonna need some shop, shop time. Uh, we'll have to take this gauge apart. It may have to get new guts put in. There are companies out there that we can replace the old guts of this with brand new, and then it would be retested at that point. Also too, uh, sometimes these pointers move, and this will have to be inspected to make sure that the pointer is actually not slipped around the shaft inside where the gauge is at. Um, so at that point, we know right now that this gauge needs some shop time, and this is how a deadweight gauge tester actually works, and this is what we use to calibrate the gauges on the locomotive. Have you ever wanted to help fire up a steam engine? Ever wanted to stroll through a giant roundhouse with a unique collection of locomotives? Well now, here's your chance. Join us on Wednesday, October 28th for a blue flag tour of the Age of Steam Roundhouse in Sugar Creek, Ohio. You'll get a behind the scenes look at the museum, 
Meet the people behind the award-winning restorations and shovel coal into a real fire-breathing locomotive. Visit the events page on our website to find out how you can buy tickets today. And that's what we've been able to accomplish this past month. Thank you everybody for your donations and your support to our good friends here at the Midwest Railway Preservation Society. And if you're interested in becoming a volunteer here on Riding 2100, then please consider becoming a member of American Steam Railroad today. Again, thank you everybody for your support and take care.